Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, The Real Super Sam. Today is another comic book review, and I hope you enjoy. Yes, today I'm reviewing the very first issue of Marvel Comics, which is the first appearance of the Submariner in the 1940s Human Torch. So, I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to review the two stories in order, or three, or yeah, whatever. Here, a scientist creates a robot that can stay on fire forever. He is afraid because he has no control over it. The human torch escapes and people are freaking out, causing people to go after him. The robot is as confused as everybody around him, questioning himself about his flame. When the firefighters try to put out his flame, he just walks right through it. These two guys are trying to get fire insurance illegally. So far, this comic seems pretty generic, like everyone can write one of these. But I imagine back then, everyone was amazed by uh, about the brains who came up with this idea. The robot tries to put out his flame, but nothing works as he is so great that he can melt metal bars just by touching them. The human torch saves people from a fire. Now he seems like not a bad guy. He confronts the fraud. He causes a gas bomb at him to escape, but the gas bomb before it touches the human torch melts. The, the torch eventually captures him, and the robot seems to have more brains than you'd think. I like how the dialogue is not that far off from how we talk today. And the artwork reminds me of the old Batman comics at the time also. At the end, I must say, I love this story. This obviously isn't the Fantastic Four Human Torch, but the robot is interesting to read about. At the end, he isn't a proclaimed superhero. We don't know what he'll do next. He just cleared his name. That is something that becomes regular in Marvel Comics, the question of what a superpowered being will do next. Next is the first appearance of the Submariner. We start with a driver in a submarine coming out saying that he was looking at a wreck. He tells people that there's been a safe that looks empty, but there was a knife that wasn't rusted. So they decide to investigate a bit more. The two divers find men underwater lifting heavy objects and breathing underwater and wearing next to nothing in clothing in a deep dark ocean. The Submariner then believes that the two people are robots and decides to cut their air hoses so the divers will leave. This is the first time we see the Submariner and he looks a lot different. I mean, he has red hair, what the heck? They start to send more people down below to check out what's happening. And let's just say after that the Submariner kicks them out. The Submariner returns to his home with the divers and we see how different some citizens looked back then. He sees that there are Earthmen and here we see the Submariner's mom. I must say here that the artwork for this story looks worse than the last one. The underwater feels lines, they just like draw lines for the like feel of it being underwater. I guess I didn't know what the Submariner would become in the future, so he has green skin here. It's kind of weird, and kind of cool also, to see how it changes in the future. So, then it's they send the Submariner and to destroy the human world. I'm sorry, this might... Submariner's mom tells him about the story of why they hate us. He is the only one left that can breathe and land in air to right the wrongs of us humans. Samariner and Dorma, his cousin, go to land and start attacking people. They decide to attack a lighthouse first. These pianos look cool, and they are one of the first times the Samariner has attacked a human race. I used to think that the Samariner was never an outright supervillain to be afraid of, that the Fantastic Four may have been just in, like, exaggerating the stories about him, but here, he really is. Here, he really is just like a member of the Fantastic Four rogues gallery. And that's... The end of the comic. I'm more shocked than you watching this. The Mariner was a downright supervillain here. Anyway, there were some iconic scenes with the future telling of him. I liked the battle at the end, and the goal of destroying a lighthouse is unique, but everything else tasted a bit weird to me. Something short here I want to mention. There is a third story about a man named Kazar. But this isn't the famous Kazar that first appeared in X-Men issue 10, and the stories that are not noteworthy by any means. It says that the angel's in this story also, but I don't know. He wasn't in what I was reading. I wasn't, and it wasn't going to be the angel from the X-Men if it was. So, I ranked this comic a 5 out of 10. I know it's one of the lowest I've ranked here, and I feel like I'm kind of disrespecting Marvel, but it's my opinion, and even a 5 out of 10 comics are worth reading, I'd say. It's crazy to think how much each character changed from 1939 to today, and that this comic used to be 10 cents. Now, it's for probably a million dollars. I hope you all enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.